Greetings metalheads and welcome to a new analysis of a metal song again by Cradle of Filth. Because in my last video I focused on the way in which Cradle of Filth illustrates the primordial biblical female being Eve in uh, To Eve the Art of Witchcraft, I felt that the natural continuation of that discussion would be best centered around another song, uh, this time from their 2003 album Damnation and a Day, with a similar theme, namely Serpent Tongue. Damnation and a Day is centered around the concept of the fall of humanity and the subsequent rise of the Antichrist, as inspired by uh, uh, John Milton's epic poem from the uh, late 17th century, Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is generally seen as a first piece of romantic literature in the English language, the figure of Satan being greatly humanized and made relatable like a veritable Byronic hero. And Cradle of Phil's album similarly focuses on Lucifer or Fairy Loose. Serpent Tongue revolves around uh, the biblical story of Genesis, and it is a song about temptation, sin, and subsequent damnation, about the corruption of Eden's purity and sacredness, but what is out of the ordinary about it is that it highlights and contrasts two female figures, Lilith and Eve. In a sense, it is literally the moment of the fall of man, since Adam is rather a pawn in all of this. Lilith and Eve are those who hold the fate of humanity in their hands. So let's listen. The term unspoken man is, uh, of course, used to describe Adam, so he is characterized by his silence and dullness, as Adam is often portrayed as an obedient and passive figure in the Garden of Eden story. And Cradle of Phil doesn't miss the chance to emphasize how he's moved around by the other characters in the story. The idea uh, that he is dusting the ledgers of the Seraphim uh, could be a metaphor for his role as a caretaker in the Garden of Eden as well as his uh, status as a creation of God. We can imagine this bland Adam as someone who fulfills his daily chores without questioning, who is naive and out of touch with reality, uh, lacking any social abilities. Uh, he hunts, he spends time in nature and with his animals, but has no idea how to interact with his wife Eve or to satisfy her desires. Uh, she is busy sucking thumbs because he is never by her side. The couple is disconnected and Adam himself spattered into shells, uh, which I take to be another sexual metaphor along with uh, pricked in rosy gardens. So basically he is horny but he prefers to keep it to himself rather than interact with Eve uh, because there is no carnal lust before the fall. Lilith, on the other hand, is quite the opposite of Adam. Uh, she sees this silent man hunting naked with his dogs, and her desire is aroused. But unlike Eve, she knows how to take what she wants. <laughs> The seduction of Adam. 
So Lilith prowls like a predator and approaches him in a manner that leaves no doubt about what she wants. She moves lasciviously, she touches him, and Adam quickly loses all resolve to abstain. The contrast between them is cleverly set with her grin and his silent lips. The self-assured, voluptuous woman versus the passive man. And uh, this quickly turns into sex. The scene of their sexual encounter is a raptor's nest, and I find the notion of Adam, even dinosaurs, really funny, because I wonder if it's poking fun at uh, the Christian theories, whether dinosaurs never existed because the Bible doesn't mention them, or at those young earth creationism illustrations where Adam and Eve are represented with dinosaurs in an effort to prove that the earth is 6,000 years old, hence the first humans exist simultaneously with dinosaurs. Either way, this is a really funny touch, and there is a lot of sarcasm in this song, as it often is with Cradle of Filth, uh, uh, especially when their humor is supposed to come off as uh, uh, blaspheming. At first we have a cleverly described sex scene with some really beautiful metaphors. So she writhes in ecstasy, her pendulous moves can cause him to spill his rod. So it's clearly a pleasurable moment for them both. But Lilith is not only moved by lust. In seducing Adam, she not only wants to drive him into temptation, to forsake God's law and to break his word, but she also seeks forbidden knowledge, the secret name of God. In Kabbalah, the true name of God is believed to hold immense power and knowledge, but it's too sacred to be spoken aloud as it could lead to devastating consequences. So Lilith manipulates Adam to gain access to divine knowledge and power and to exercise dominance, uh, thus uh, proving her uh, influence on God's precious creation, Adam, is stronger than the influence of God himself. But this takes a really dark turn. Uh, once the haze of lust is lifted from his eyes, um, Adam realizes his mistake, uh, he feels guilty and frightened, and he reacts in a violent way, slitting her throat. So here is Lilith's fall from grace. With tail and blood between her legs, uh, not only suggests Lilith's failed plan and subsequent humiliation, but portrays her as a demon. Uh, she has a tail, she is serpent-like. And um, now we find out that while Lilith and Adam were going at it, uh, Eve was not so saintly herself.
I love how Satan, the serpent, is referred to as greed. So he is the epitome of greed in this biblical episode because he wants to drive people into sin to make them break God's law and thus take them into possession. And in corrupting Eve, he condemns the entirety of humanity, so putting every human in a state of sin. So Satan realizes Eve's potential for sin and proceeds to seduce her. This is a beautiful parallel to Lilith's seduction of Adam. And now we see how Eve is portrayed here compared to uh, uh, her image into Eve, the art of witchcraft. So here Eve is one of those pampered housewives. She is very kept uh, while her husband is out hunting and being adulterous, uh, she is taking care of God's creation. Uh, she is untouched, uh, not out of virtue, but out of ignorance. Uh, she is privileged because she is born with a silver spoon, uh, but her privilege is arbitrary as she is only a simple dish. So she is special because she's the first and only woman, uh, not because of any quality of her. Incubus and prudence, I feel, um, suggest um, her inner battle between curiosity for something forbidden and uh, fulfilling her desires versus the fear of breaking God's law. Like into Eve, the art of witchcraft, Eve is here associated with the moon, uh, which is uh, in uh, many mythological traditions seen as feminine uh, for the association with fertility and the cycle of life, the waxing and the waning. Her attention, just like Adam's, is also undivine. They are just as easily corrupted with the offer of something they don't have. I love the vivid sexual imagery uh, with the sticky climb between her thighs showing how sex is the easiest way for both man and woman to be manipulated. Uh, the serpent is the true mastermind, a shining angel in disguise, and he draws Eve's attention to the tree of knowledge and uh, she finds it glorious. Um, and, and I love the image it has here and it actually reminds me of the um, Anglo-Saxon poem uh, The Dream of the Rude. Uh, it's, uh, it appears in front of her uh, as uh, something wondrous with games of light and shadow suggesting the forbidden knowledge within and also its destructive nature. I love how this uh, uh, second and final chorus mirrors and contrasts the first one so beautifully. Uh, remember that with Lilith, the chorus went, um, no seeds past those fruitful lips, suggesting that it wasn't actually Lilith that was the most sinful out of the two women and the uh, uh, 
three figures actually, but it was Eve. So Lilith only succeeded in making Adam succumb to lust. Uh, maybe he got scared before he even reached climax, uh, since the song says that no seed passed um, her lips, but not in making him do something against God. Um, Eve's transgression, however, throws mankind in vast eclipse because the seeds of the apple and of the uh, um, corruption or the knowledge that it contains passed her fruitful lips. So uh, the last line, the better paradise, um, suggests that the devil's deception was aimed at achieving a better paradise, um, perhaps through uh, um, the gaining of knowledge and power um, for himself and the power of knowledge for humans, uh, which were lacking from paradise. And I think that this is quite uh, congruent with uh, um, Paradise Lost in that uh, um, the devil is shown as not only wanting to do uh, pure evil, but actually uh, doing what he thinks is good and what he thinks is lacking from the world that uh, God created in that he finds God um, um, selfish for not allowing his uh, creation to benefit from uh, uh, knowledge but uh, uh, he Satan would be the um, a better Lord uh, a bringer of knowledge so this was my analysis everyone I hope you enjoyed it before I wrap up this video um, I wanted to let you know that I will have a uh, big announcement referring to the content of this channel so I'm going to add Add some new type of content and uh, I'm excited about this and uh, I hope you will enjoy it as well but um, uh, I, I'll discuss this perhaps in a short uh, so uh, expect to see that a little update soon um, so um, again I really hoped you enjoyed my analysis of Serpent Tongue if you did please like this video and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and stay tuned for a new analysis of metal lyrics. Until next time, stay inspired.